Hi students, quick um, grammar video for us to review some of the practice that we have been studying in the classroom and also to remind us about some of the different um, pieces of grammar. Specifically today we are looking at verbs. Specifically from verbs we are looking at modal verb which is sometimes also referred to as helping verb although in the grammar textbook, helping verb and modal verb are separate. Um, if you think about modal verb similar to a helping verb, it's, it's very close. Um, today we're going to talk about a few different modals that are easier. And at the end, we're going to add in a little bit of a more difficult piece that we have been practicing in class. And so we are here in this video to review it. Um, what we're going to talk about today are what we call modals of necessity when we talk about things that need to happen or things that must happen, things that are required, things that are compulsory. Um, we've reviewed this vocabulary in class. The adjective form of necessity, or necessary, a necessary document, a necessary meeting, obligatory, compulsory, required, and mandatory. Um, in class, I always remind you that mandatory, required, and necessary, these are the three most common um, adjectives in English to describe necessity. Um, the word compulsory is a very strong British English word. Um, I do hear it, I do use it occasionally, but my American English background, um, I'm more, re I'm more likely to use the word necessary, required, or mandatory. Um, a mandatory meeting at work, a document that's required, a necessary uh, appointment. The noun form for these words is necessity, obligation, compulsion, requirement, and mandate. This last word of mandate is a very uncommon word, um, but this can be a noun. So when I say modals of necessity, this is the noun form saying that these modals describe necessary activities, compulsory activities, mandatory activities. Um, the first one I want to look at is using this sentence of I hmm, go. And this blank position here is where my modal would fit. Or if I used an auxiliary, if I use a helping verb, where those would go. Remember what we are talking about today, these types we do refer to as modals. We're going to talk about must today. I must go. I need to. I need to go. I have to go. I have to go. And then this bad, this bad grammar, acceptable grammar, but lazy grammar of I have got to go, I gotta go. Today, my major focus that I want you to think about and what I believe is a new piece for us today is had better. We have been practicing this in English class, so I hope this video today is refreshing, reminding, um, helping you to remember about had better and how it is being used in the sentence. Um, some grammar textbooks I have seen refer to had better as giving advice. However, in my English heart, my English intuition, had better is stronger for necessary, must. There is a feeling of threat. There is a feeling of or else when I hear had better. And we'll talk more about that in the future. So maybe you don't agree with me or your previous teacher would disagree with me that had better is for necessary or mandatory. Um, but in my opinion, it is. So let's start with looking at must. When we think about must, um, remember that must is being used without to, T-O. Um, I'm using must for the present or for the future. 
when we change this to the past, it becomes a more difficult level of grammar that we will review in a future video. Um, some examples here. She must help her sister. This sentence could mean right now, today, this moment. She must help her sister. This could also be future. She must help her sister next week. Next week, she must help her sister. We must work harder. This has a feeling of present habit, but it could be tomorrow we must work harder in class. We have been lazy. We must work harder tomorrow. They must find a different job. They must find a different job. I must learn more Arabic words. I must learn more Arabic words. I didn't put any sentences in this uh, practice using negative, but of course these sentences could also be negative. She must not help her sister. We must not work harder. We are already working hard enough. We must not work harder. They must not find a different job. I must not learn something, 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 something. It is possible to make a contraction with must not, mustn't, but this is less common in American English. More common to hear people in American English separate them out and say, you must not, you must not. Um, the next one for us to talk about is need to, need to. Again, just like must, this can be used in present or for the future. When I move it to the past, it becomes a much more complicated grammar that we will address in a future lesson. With need to, we do have to, we must use the to connected to the infinitive verb. I need to visit my sister. I need to visit my sister. It could be right now, this moment. It could be next week, next month. The students need to study tomorrow. Again, it could be right now, it could be tomorrow. The need to study doesn't change. She needs to learn how to drive. Here with third person, singular, she, he, it. I will see the present tense using the S. She needs to learn how to drive. However, again, maybe this sentence I'm telling you, she needs to learn how to drive next week. She needs to learn how to drive next month so that she can get a job. When she receives her uh, work document, she needs to learn how to drive. So even though I'm using that present tense S, it is possible that this could still be a future um, sentence. Next for us to think about is have to or has to to use for the present or the future. Um, I have to call her back. It could be right now. I have to call her back. It could be next week. I have to call her back next week. The students have to come to class next week. The students have to come to class next week. He, she, it with has. She has to learn. She has to learn how to drive. She has to learn how to drive. The next piece with have to or has to is this bad grammar of gotta that we have talked about in another video. If you haven't watched the gotta video, you should watch that video for more explanation about, about how we form this grammar using have got to or has got to in present or future tense. Um, just my very quick review, even though we see got and got looks like past tense, this is not a form of past tense. The got is pushed into the sentence to be emphasis, extra strength. Um, for example, I have got to call her back. I've got to call her back. I got to call her back. I have got to. I have got to call her back. I've got to. I've got to call her back. I got to call her back. They have got to. They have got to come to class next week. That's strong emphasis. They have got to come to class. They've got to. They've got to come to class. Reduced. They got to. They got to come to class. 
And then with he or she or it, she has got to learn. She has got to learn how to drive. She's gotta, she's gotta learn how to drive. She's gotta. One last piece with have got to and has got to, and I did mention this just quickly a minute ago. Um, remember, this is not a past tense. Even though we see got, which absolutely got is the past tense of get. For my sentence, I got a car. Got is the main verb in the past. Yesterday, I got a car. I have got to get a car. I got to get. I got to get a car. This is present tense right now saying I must get a car. I must acquire a car. Finally, we come to our focus for this grammar practice or maybe the newest piece for you of this grammar, which is had better. Um, had better we are using for present and future tense. Some textbooks describe this as a form of giving advice, but like I've said before, in my English heart, in my cultural intuition, I do feel like had better is stronger than advice. It feels more like a threat, like you have to do it or something bad will be happening to you. Um, she had better help her sister, mother to child, mother saying, you had better help your sister. The feeling between here that if you do not help your sister, there is some type of punishment coming from the mother. Um, hey, students, you had better come to class on time hmm, or else. Um, he had better be on time. If he's not on time, he's going to lose his job. He had better be on time. I had better get going. I really have to. I'd better get going. I'd. I'd better get going. They had better finish their work. They don't have any time left. They had better finish their work. They had better. They had better. They had better finish their work. It had better change. It, the situation. It had better change or else I am quitting. There is such a strong feeling of threat, of all else, with this phrasal, um, with this modal phrase, had better. Had better is not a past tense form. Even though we see had, which I agree 100%, this is absolutely the past of have. For example, my two sentences here, I had a car. Had is the main verb in the past. I had better get a car. This is right now. I must get a car. I must acquire a car. Okay, one last note here before we are finishing up. I'm wondering what sentence can you make using had better as a modal for necessity? Um, oh, I forgot this last important piece. Had better is beautiful because it doesn't change. I had better. You had better, he, she, it had better, we had better, and they had better. Doesn't change. A uh, must in the same way. Must never changes. Love it. Have to, I have to go, she has to go. A small change for the third person. Need to, I need to go, she needs to go. A small change for the third person. Remember again that these five must, have to, need to, have got to, and had better. These are all five being used for necessary, mandatory, obligatory, compulsory, something that you must do. There is a feeling that you don't have a choice. A different modal like would, could, should, might, there is a feeling of choice. Must, have to, need to, have got to or gotta, had better. There is not as much, there is not a feeling of choice for these modals, which is why I refer to them all together as these modals of necessity. 
what sentence can you make in the comments? Um, leave me a sentence. Again, all of these we are talking about just for present tense and future tense. When we move them to the past, they become more complicated, and that's for another video. All right, students, take care. Talk to you later. See you soon. Bye.